Hello and welcome to Health Matters on Channels Television. Thanks for joining us. I am Mary Alale Yusuf. In recent months, there have been reports of an in increase in the spate of suicides in Nigeria, especially among women. What is responsible for the rise? The World Health Organization is calling suicide a serious public health problem. More than 700,000 people die by suicide every year, and for every suicide, there are, more than, there are many more who attempt it. It is the fourth leading cause of death among 15 to 29-year-olds. 77% of global suicides occurred in low- and middle-income countries in 2019. Yet, the apex health body says they are preventable with timely, evidence-based, and often low-cost interventions. My guest is a consultant psychiatrist, as well as medical director and chief executive officer of Pinnacle Medical Services in Lagos. Dr. Memuna Kadiri joins us via Zoom from Lekki in Lagos. You're welcome to the show. Always smiling. I love that. <laughs> Good day. Great to be here. Um, you have to smile amidst the chaos. Um, you, you put a smile on your face. It's your responsibility to make yourself happy. <laughs> yes, in recent months, many women have not been smiling. We heard, you know, suicide after suicide of women, you know, jumping into the lagoon. One was found in a bush because uh, her baby was crying, so that's why they knew she was there. You know, stories like that. Why is this happening among women? So when we look at the, um, the trend from the World Health Organization, of course, some um, researches globally, um, it's still very obvious that we have cases of suicide more among men than women. In fact, tw um, um, twice more in men than in, in women. For every one completed case of suicide in, in men, it's 20 attempted cases in women. And so, uh, of course, in recent times, Nigerians have woken up to hear about suicide cases in women, especially women in relationships. So, and we'll be wondering what exactly is happen happening. Is it an increase in the rate of suicide or an increase in the awareness in the rates of suicide? Um, if you, anyone you choose, they're both right. Because yes, there's an increase, and also yes, there's an increase in the awareness. And you know, social media is there to push things out for us to see and um, understand on a day-to-day -day basis. And when you look at the, the history in recent times, that we're talking about women who are either engaged in a relationship or who are in marriages. And so we have to take cognizance of what are the things in our society that is propelling people to in dealing with all these challenges. Of course, stress is there. Um, history of um, domestic violence, we shouldn't take that away from any of this discussion because we have what we call protective factors. Protective factors, women are the ones that easily, when and if they need help, they, they come out, they, they shout on social media, they reach out to loved ones, they go to the hospital. You know, that willingness to seek for help is very high among women. And women, you know, always like to cultivate um, support system. But if they are also fit with faced with a lot of risk factors, risk factors like childhood sexual abuse, domestic violence issues, postpartum depression, perinatal um, challenges, you know, with pregnancy up to, up to one year after giving birth. Then, of course, those already that have attempted suicide before in the past, those with family history of um, 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 someone who has died of suicide who has, or who has also attempted suicide, some people who could be dealing with men existing mental illnesses like depression, bipolar affective disorder, or even abusive substances. A lot of people that die by suicide, this is linked by you know um depression. And a lot of times because of undetected, undiagnosed mental illnesses. So when people die by suicide, a lot of times it's not because they want to die, it's because of the fact that they are tired of, you know, relieving the trauma. Some people will come and tell you that, you know, sleep is no longer effective of taking care of their suffering. Um, if they die, nobody will care about them. You know, um, life is, there's no future for them to live in. So there's a lot that we have to, you know, put in place. And that is why I say stigma hurts when it's attached to people living with mental illnesses, including their families. Okay, that brings me to my oh, next point. Um, um, 
we believed, you know, in the past that people who die by suicide don't want to go unannounced, so to speak. They want people to know why it's happening. So they leave a note behind, or they say something, or they do something. But it just seems all of a sudden that people just go, and nobody knows why. Is the pattern changing? Not really. It's, you know, there's still a, a, a lot. The taboo is still there. Stigma, discrimination is still very high. Yeah, and um, nobody wants to. Imagine you have a, a child who wants to marry, and then you hear that that family had somebody who had died by suicide. Mm. Some people would say, no, 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 don't go there. There must, that family is cursed. Um, there's a, there's a, that family, there's a problem in that home. And that doesn't make people to come out to talk about it. We, we all know that when people talk more about what they deal with, people are able to relate with them. People are able to encourage help-seeking behaviors and all that. The pattern hasn't really changed. It's just that, you know, we, ha we have to build a culture of compassion, a culture of compassion that enables people to speak out and speak out, enables people to, you know, we encourage help-seeking behavior. We help, we get people to reach the right people at the right places and at the right time. Those things, you know, help to build that, you know, um, a safe space that will enable people to be able to do, you know, um, seek help when and if they need help. Because truly when people die by suicide, like I said earlier, not really they want to die. People are suffering in silence. So they don't feel that they are a burden. People who don't miss them. And that's why we talk about the warning signs. When somebody is talking about, if I die now, people will not cry. People will not care whether I live. Um, you, you, you said you love this, my bag. Um, take it. You know, they start dashing out their prized properties or they withdraw to themselves. Or there's that change in character, you know, expressing risky behaviors. Your know, sleeping pattern has changed, mood has changed. And so many other things. So we, as people, as humans, have to start looking inwards and start checking on our loved ones, including the strong ones. And while we are doing that, we shouldn't leave ourselves behind. For the three examples that I researched, um, there were women who should have been happy. They had good jobs. In, in the case of one, she had a commendation from her boss. She was the best combat person in her class. Just got engaged. You know, it, it was just going well for her. Another one was living in this magnificent estate. These are people we think should have been happy. What could they have done differently? Because it, like it's obvious that there were some things that were in place already for them. I like the fact you said that we, people we think should be happy and those are the things assumptions and perceptions are joy killers when we assume and perceive things we'll, because two of us now can view the same thing and we have different outcomes and that's what life is all about it's not about you know how you see things it's about how you react to things so these people could have everything going on well with them but at the same time they could be dealing with a whole lot that the society doesn't allow them to express themselves the people around them the people don't feel comfortable enough trust um, to, to express themselves. So, or they might have been doing that, but those people have been neglecting you know, uh, what they are saying, telling them that they are just seeking attention, um, that in fact, everybody is depressed in Nigeria. You are not, a, you are not alone. Why, do you, why are you talking about this? Um, I think you are not fasting and praying enough. You know, we become apostolic towards these people. So some people just tell themselves, look, no matter what I, what I do, how I say it and how I express myself, people are not going to take me seriously. Seriously, people are dealing with it. Let's not forget that depression is the highest burden of disability globally. And today is International Day for Living Disabilities, right? The truth is that that is the biggest burden right now, bigger than cancer. And if you are dealing with depression, it's not that you want depression. You didn't go to the market to buy it. It could be because of family history or some other issues that you are dealing with, and it just has a way of robbing you of your joy, your happiness, and sometimes. It comes to that phase where you just feel you, you feel hopeless, worthless, and helpless. And you just think that look, it's better off I'm gone than staying alive. Do do men have this same problem when their relationships go south? Or what's the deal breaker for them on life? 
<laughs> men even experience this. But so, so you see, um, men, because we are in a society, especially in Africa, let's narrow it down to Nigeria, right? You know, we tell our boys when they are younger, men don't cry, mm -hmm. man up, be a man, you know, why you behave like a woman. And so you find men don't generally express their emotions. Men just kind of bottle up. And you imagine you visiting a man whose wife just died and people are like, ah, be a man now. You, you, you know, and some people even will tell him, look, just hurry up and remarry. You know, that kind of thing. And you see a woman will never remarry for the rest of her life again because of oh, yeah. just children. And children. So truly, men face this also because we do not allow our men to express their emotions. And that is why men die by suicide more than women. And um, they experience more risky behaviors and they use more dangerous weapons. Um, you hardly see a woman using gun on herself. Is it a pesticide or something, you know, mm -hmm. of lesser, you know, um, but, but they see that, right? But the men are the ones that like tie rope on their neck, use, you know, leather weapons and all that. So we also have to say that this is a human thing. It's not about men and women, but it's also about we creating a culture of compassion where people can speak up and speak out, get the help that they need at the right place at the right time and from the right set of people. We are now living in a very digitized world. People talk to each other by social media, you know, they send smiling emojis to each other. You don't know what's happening in their minds. How do you detect that somebody is going through something on the internet, your friend on the internet? So and if I like that you said friend, because if it's not your friend, you may not really know much about that person, but, right? But if it's a friend, one thing I always tell people to watch out for is change. That is one word I tell people. What has changed about you or your friend that is giving you that concern? And follow, you know, Listen to your intuition. Something has changed in that your friend. A friend or Nari who loves to be the life of the party, all of all of a sudden doesn't like to go out. A friend who you know um, likes uh, you know this yeah, person that is always you know happy, and all of a sudden you know you you are telling the person we are we are going out canceling meetings on you at the last moment or canceling outing at, at you at the last moment. If you're even living in the same house with such a person, you may even notice some certain things like not coming for dinner or coming to the table to eat or spending longer hours in the bathroom and all that. But in a digitized world, is that what change you should look out for? Sometimes they, they embed what they want to say in a cryptic way. They can start posting certain things that you know is not in tandem with this person. And then Something tells you there's something wrong. That is the time for you to reach out. If you think there's something wrong with a friend, a loved one, a family member right now, reach out to that person. And that is why I keep saying, this is a, this is a good day for you to reach out to loved ones, including those that you think they are strong. But while at that, don't leave yourself behind. Okay, Dr. Memuna, we're going on a short break. When we come back, we continue the conversation. Stay with us as we wait. We continue the conversation right after the break. Welcome back. It's Health Matters on channels, television, and we're talking about curbing suicide. 0808-054-2233 is the number to call if you have a question on suicide. You can also tweet at CTV underscore Mary A or just send email to moalale at channelstv.com. Let's continue the conversation. Now, Dr. Memuna, um, suicide is criminalized in Nigeria. I want you to take us to the person who is caught and has to spend about a year in jail for attempting suicide. What's going through that person's mind? Have you met any of them? Uh, very terrible. Um, I've come across at least two people being practicing as a psychiatrist who have actually gone to jail. Um, I think one was really publicly uh, announced. Um, I think CNN even carried the, that case. And when I was sitting down with him and discussing this, I, I, I realized even in my practice, in my training, you know, um, it sounds so absurd. Like somebody who is already suicidal, how do you see this as 
a criminal offense. Of course, the Section 327 of the Criminal Code um, talks about this, right? And this is one of the things we have in our mental health bill, decriminalizing suicide. And we are hoping that that is passed into an act soon because it's with the president, so and, and that is the final stage. You know, but the truth is that somebody who is already suicidal is already feeling hopeless, worthless, and helpless. And then you now send the person you know, to jail, which is, is a misdemeanor in Nigeria, and that is tantamount to incarceration. We know how Nigerian prisons are. You are that person is now being locked up. It's not like it's being seen by mental professional or if he's going through depression or any of those mental illnesses, is being um, cancelled or given medication. So a lot goes through their mind in that process because it's like two bad things happen to you at the same time. You are dealing with a mental issue and then you are now locked up in jail again. So decriminalizing suicide is what we really advocate for and that is why we are very intentional especially those of us in the mental health space advocating not to use the word somebody committed suicide it sounds so criminal rather use the words or statement somebody died by suicide right as against committed because committed just means that this is a crime and it's no fault of this individual because at that point in time it feels or she feels like a body life is not worth living and everything just feels worthless and hopeless for that individual for those who have survived suicide maybe they didn't go to jail or they're out or whatever i'm sure you've met a few of them is there anything we can learn from them what do they say that we can we can glean some wisdom from and and help others and help ourselves as well so it, it goes either way some will say i'm not happy that i'm alive Mm. And so such a person, you have to also make sure you do all the necessary things, help if their, their background, medical condition, because not only mental illnesses, some people may have chronic end-stage uh, medical condition, they could have chronic debilitating illnesses like cancer, they could have chronic pain. So what is that person going through that you can help that person relieve that pain at that point in time? Why a lot of them admit that they are happy to survive. They never wish this for their worst enemy. They never wish this for anyone. They, they would rather, you know, would like to tell people that when you are in that deep hole, that place, try to get help on time, speak up and speak out. But one thing that is a major barrier is the stigma and discrimination. I have a number of clients that want to speak up. But what is stopping them from speaking up are family members. Do you know who we are? People will think we are all mad in our family. We are highly placed in the society. If only we break down these barriers, we will be able to save more lives. And, 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 and that is why there's an increase in awareness, right? But that stigma, taboo, discrimination, prejudice attached to you know, suicide is still so high that people that will have loved to share their stories, that you see them looking glamorous, life is good with them, but you never know what they have gone through. If they're allowed to speak up and speak out, it will be more relatable. And people will know that, look, life can happen to anyone at any point in time, and nobody you know, is immune, completely immune to having a mental illness, and there's no vaccine yet, none even in, in, the, in the works, that we can say, once you take this vaccine, you will never have a mental illness. Things can happen to people, but mental illnesses are beatable, treatable, and manageable, and suicide is 100% preventable. Now, if it is true, if it is true that um, there are less than 300 psychiatrists to <laughs> in this country, <laughs> it's almost laughable, but really it's sad. How are we going to get people to actually attend to the populace that needs help? But before you answer that question, let's turn to Yusuf, who has a question for, on the show. Hello, Yusuf. Hello, hello good, hello, good afternoon, madam. Good afternoon. What's your question? Yeah, um, I, want to, I want to make some little contributions. Um, truly horrible for you to criminalize a suicider. Look at the way we, look at the way we are being governed in this country. For example, is there any advocacy? Is there any is there any is there any teaching? Do they teach the public not to commit suicide? And if you want to commit suicide, where do you go? 
I want to take this opportunity to advise the Muslims, my brother, my, my, my Muslim sisters and brothers. Committing suicide is a sin in the presence of God. Believe in God that God will bring you out. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Yusuf. He's bringing in there the spiritual angle. Believing in God can help you uh, stay strong. Is that true, Dr. Me? Um, people who are more spiritually minded even get healed better and you know happier in life because spiritual awareness is part of the wheel of awareness, right? But the truth is that when people get to that point where they die by suicide, it's not that they pray less or they fast less or they don't believe in God or they don't love God or they don't believe that God loves them. But they are in a dark hole. They don't just. They, they're not saying I want to die. They, they, I need to break from. Break, have a break from relieving trauma. Um, life is pointless at this point in time. There is no future I want to live in. Those are the things that go through the mind. And that is where, you know, checking on our loved ones and helping them when they are in dying is very important. People that die from suicide is not because they are less religious. It is because they are going through a phase, they don't even know who they are. They don't, they don't, they don't, if they're not happy, life is worthless and helpless at that point. And for your question, I hope this answers you so's question. For your question regarding less than, is it 200, 300, 250 um, psychiatrists to <laughs> 200 million Nigerians, meaning one psychiatrist to one million Nigerians, right? The good way to go about that is what we call tax shifting and tax sharing. Okay, Maybe before you that. get into that, let's quickly take Aluma from Akwaibom. Hello, Aluma. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. What's your question or contribution? The spelling of Aluma is A L O M A. Aluma, okay. Thank you for that. Good afternoon to you and your guest, Dr. Memuna. Thank you so much. Yeah, honestly, Dr. Memuna has spoken my mind. But now you're the one she has said. You see, the rate of suicide among men is high because the rate of frustration in this country called Nigeria, our country, our dear country, is high because without good leaders in place, pain from the, from the minds of Nigerians, the pain is too much. Doctor, give my submission. I hear you, Aloma. I hear you. Thank you so much. Oh, we are out of time. It's a wrap on the show. Doctor, you know I'll invite you again. <laughs> Have a wonderful day. And thank you so much, Aloma, for your call, and Yusuf, and everybody there listening to the program. Take care of yourself. Have a wonderful day. I am Mary Alale Yusuf. <laughs>